Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. We're going to be having a series of studies today and I uh, hope they're going to be a blessing to you. Well, first studies are going to be called The Fight in Gospel Ministry. So if you're a pastor, a preacher, an evangelist or involved in mission or involved in Christian work in any way, whether it be a Sunday school teacher or a youth worker um, or a prayer warrior, then this series is going to be for you. I'm going to do it every five minute sections um, so then I can put it on other channels um, in, in sizable chunks so, uh, but it's going to be a, a, a series that you're going to enjoy and I'm sure it will be a blessing to you. Let's come before the Lord. Lord we just thank you for this day we thank you for your goodness and love and Father I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the presence of your Holy Spirit I pray that you would enlighten us and teach us Lord and I pray that this study would strengthen people's faith, help them, and encourage them in your name and for your glory, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you'd use me. And I just pray that these studies would be a blessing to many people, Father, in your name, Lord. Please come, Holy Spirit, to guide and help for your glory. Amen. If you remember the First World War, um, a lot of people didn't realize it was coming and um, when it was coming they didn't think it was going to last long they thought that the first world war would just be up just be over pretty quickly and that'll be the end of it but millions of people went into that war millions of French uh, German American British Canadian Australian Turkish people all got involved in that war and it was a bloody war sometimes we as Christians can underestimate the spiritual war that we're in we're in a, a titanic battle a titanic battle for the souls of men and women and boys and girls they will go to hell if they don't come to find Jesus Christ and we have been called to tell these people that they need Jesus and as we do that we enter a mighty battle a fierce battle and we need to be prepared 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 says I have fought the good fight I have kept the faith we're in a fight and we've got to keep the faith so many people today come into the church and they drift away I've heard stories of people who've been solid Christians for a number of years and then they suddenly stop if you're one of those people you've stopped fighting for Jesus come back I pray for some of you today please come back I have fought the fight good fight I have kept the faith 2 Timothy 4 7 let us be fighters for Jesus let us never ever ever give in he said, Jason, I'm tired, I'm discouraged, I've been broken by other Christians, I, I don't seem to have my needs met by God. I have fought the good fight, I have kept the faith, 2 Timothy 4, 7. Come on! Where's your courage? Where is your courageousness for your God? Jesus died for you at Calvary. He gave your life for you go to the Savior and say Lord I can't go on I cannot fight no more help me and he will help you I have fought the good fight I have kept the faith to Timothy 4 7 come on keep the faith folks General Douglas MacArthur said this it is fatal to enter any war without the will to win it we have got to have a, a desire as the people of God a purpose we've got to get that purpose back we've got to get strong in the purpose of what the people of God were called to do and do you know what we were called to do the Lord gave us a great commission you've been given a commission 
to go into all the world and make disciples. If you want vision in your church, if you want vision in your ministry, if you want vision in your Christian life, come back to your purpose. Your purpose is to make disciples. Go into all the world and make disciples. Get alongside people and help them and encourage them and teach them the word of God and your life will have vision and direction in your life. It will be strong in Jesus. If you was to join the American army or the British army, you would get training, preparation, and you'll be ready for action. <laughs> I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4 7. You've been prepared by God. God is preparing you for action. We are in a war. A spiritual war, folks. And you've been called as a Christian in that war. And you cannot tell. You can't be a spiritual conscientious objector. You can't say, I don't want to get involved in this war. I don't want to get involved in this battle. If you're a child of God, you're already involved. You've already enlisted in the army of Jesus Christ. And you do not fight with the weapons of this world. Our weapons are not carnal. Our weapons are spiritual. Our weapons are the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is prayer. The kingdom of heaven is love. The kingdom of heaven is proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is caring for people. The kingdom of heaven is here. And you are to use the weapons of the kingdom of heaven. But you as a child of God cannot say, I am a conscientious spiritual objector. Object objector you can't say it it's time to get back into the war folks it's no good complaining to your pastor about your church are you at the prayer meeting storming the gates of heaven for your pastor and your church it's no good as a pastor saying your people are not moving are you getting on your knees and praying for your church are you going out proclaiming the gospel? It's no good complaining and say Christians have hurt me. What are you doing for the kingdom of God? Stop worrying about what people have said about you. Stop worrying about people who have hurt you. And get into the war. Get into the war of God. And save souls. You have a purpose today. You have a purpose. You are set for the Great Commission. You have been called to do this. Those who are wealthy, how dare you sit upon your wealth and allow millions to go to hell? Give some money to your church. Give some money to your missionary societies. Give your time and expertise to Christian organizations. How dare you sit upon your butt and allow millions of people to go to hell when you have the wealth to enable the people of God to move out in proclamation. How dare you as a millionaire and a Christian millionaire at that Sit on your wealth and allow the people of God to struggle when you can help them. We are called to proclaim the word of God and we are in a great battle. Nobody in the kingdom of God, nobody can say, I can opt out. I can opt out. It's not for me. Nonsense. We are in the greatest battle the Christian church has ever known today. We are in the fiercest battle we have ever known as the church today. And it's time we woke up. 
It's time we awoke and saw the writing on the wall. And it's time as people of God that we stood up and we stood up and be counted. Two Timothy four seven. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. When I die and you die, and we come before Jesus, our Lord, let him say to you and to me, well done, good and faithful servant. God needs you to be faithful at this time. He needs you to be faithful at this time. He says, in the last days, the love of many will wax cold. Already I see the signs of the people of God, the leaders of God. I can see their drooping hands. I can see their drooping hands. They are weary of the battle. And they need you to stand with them. They need you to stand with them. And your pastor and your elders come to the prayer meeting and to the Bible study or to church. And their hearts are heavy with the burdens of the battle. Come alongside them. Look into their face and say, Oh, thank you for being faithful. I want to stand with you brother I want to stand with you sisters I want to stand and proclaim the gospel with you and that will encourage them no end to know that they have a faithful flock that will be faithful in season and out of season upholding them in prayer upholding them in prayer Wise to know that we're in a battle. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. God is calling you to keep the faith today.